if ultimately what's happening with prescribing statins isn't really a judgment call so much as here's your markers, mm -hmm. here's the result, it's a formula, and mm -hmm. that's what the doctor's doing anyway, what is the difference between an AI doctor and a human doctor? What is the benefit of having a human involved in this? That is a great question that I don't have a perfect answer to. <laughs> but I mean, we, we're in the business of pharmacy and it's not just a business, but it's, the, it's a day-to-day -day grind to maintain and to build relationships and to build trust. And so to kind of bypass some of that is, is ultimately just to kind of restate what you're saying is, is what makes this uncomfortable. I think that this is useful. I really do. Um, because I'm the type of person that, you know, when you're thinking about maybe a personal healthcare intervention, you kind of maybe like to read some things and do some things on your own and process it on your own a little bit. And maybe you, you know, you punch in some numbers on the calculator yourself, and then you equip yourself with that when you go talk to the true expert. I think I've, you know, I fall into that camp. The problem is where, you know, some of us are know-it-alls and you say, you know what? I see, this is why I don't need my, my doctor. I don't need the expert. I know exactly this, this, this spit out exactly what I needed and all of my conditions can be managed as such. I think it's, we just have to be careful about where we, you know, how, where we apply this to. I think the over-the-counter birth control, I mean, there's, there's, there's multitude of opinions on that. Um, you know, the progestin only pill that's on the market, I get it. Um, I think this, for the proponents of something like this, this goes right along with that because it just seems so low risk. But anytime you are bypassing that relational component with a provider, I think you just have to be careful. If this steers people, which I think it does, if this steers people to the pharmacy, if this steers people to go get your blood pressure taken at this place, if it steers you to go get your blood work done at this place where there's a person there doing it, I think that that captures some of the importance with relationships and connecting this to a person that you can talk to about all those sorts of things. But if it's just, we're mailing you a kit, prick your finger, we're mailing you this cuff, measure it yourself, we're mailing you this, fill it out and send it back, and you're just out on an island as this really motivated person you know, managing your health, I think it's, it can be a little, it can definitely get a little dicey. Yeah. You know, if that makes sense. Yeah. And then the other layer to it is the individuals who are more likely to do this are those that have a higher level of health literacy as it is. And so they're generally more knowledgeable. They are more motivated. They um, are in a little bit of a higher socioeconomic status and so it's like, really, did these people need it anyway? Mm. What about the people who aren't comfortable with apps and don't have access to certain computers and to certain technology? You know, the, the main purpose of this, again, was to increase access to a really low risk medication to a, such a high prevalence problem. Are we, is this really, ca are we really capturing it by a sophisticated what, app that- That's a good point. If, if most of the underserved- under medicated people or those that don't have access to this sort of stuff anyway, are you, how are you really going to be moving the needle so much? Yeah. It's like, it's tough. Yeah. I mean, you can make that argument about supplements. You can make that argument about exercise programs. Sure. You can make that argument about exercise coaching and expensive gym memberships. You can always make those sort of arguments, but I think that it's, you know, you have to at least mention, you know, that there's, there's still a whole other side to it in that respect. Absolutely. Absolutely. Man, that's a, a big idea. And I have lots of mixed feelings about all of that. For sure. Uh, <laughs> but For sure. I guess, it, and it doesn't mean you don't, do, it doesn't mean you don't do it. Right. It's just their, their sort of um, rebuttal to that was this starts as a web based app. And yes, if you have an iPhone or you have an Android, it's going to be easier for you to find, or if you are really motivated and really educated, it'll be easy for you to just fill this out and boom, you got to, next thing you know, you have 90 days of Crestor at your front door. Right. Um, but the point is they integrate this in grocery stores and community centers and kiosks and sort of like a place where someone can go and just in five minutes, they have an answer in yeah. five minutes. They can put punch in some of their basic information or at the very least it points them to say, Hey, 
if you don't have this blood work or if you don't have a blood pressure screening, it's really easy. You just go right over here. Right. And so I think there are ways to, to bridge that gap. But in general, it's like you put this tool out there for people that are already probably going to their doctor, you know? Yep. I'm about to go see my doctor again for my annual physical and, and get all my blood work done and all that. And, you know, I think I'm capable of using an app. I'm a relatively intelligent person. Heck, I, I host a podcast about health and supplements and pharmacy and all that stuff all the time. So, I, you know, if I can't do this, come on. But, right. but the reality is I don't trust myself to do it. I would really rather have somebody else who has some wisdom and experience look at it and go, no, Tyler, you really, me, me, this is probably a good idea or no, don't do that. Try this instead. Um, man, but I guess this is the way things are going and, and it's just one more tool. Nobody's saying I have to use this or I don't have to use it. Mm -hmm. It's just another option. 